This is the S95D. It's Samsung's flagship OLED for 2024 and has been the subject of some consternation for some TV enthusiasts because it has a new anti-glare or anti-reflectant screen coating. Is there any merit to that concern? Has it maybe overshadowed how good this TV could actually be thanks to a brand new third generation QD OLED panel? Is it any brighter? Should we be excited about this TV? Well, I'm gonna answer all of those questions and you might be a little surprised by what I'm about to say. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I'm sitting in New Jersey visiting Samsung for an up close and personal look at the flagship TVs in its 2024 lineup. If all goes to plan, this is day three in a four day sprint of Samsung TV news, having covered Samsung's 8K Neo QLEDs on day one, it's 4K Neo QLEDs on day two, and now day three for OLEDs, or at least this flagship beast. We'll talk about what we do and don't know about the other OLED models uh, a little bit later. But let's not waste any time here, okay? I'm going right for the jugular. If you have been worried that this TV's picture quality was gonna suffer in any meaningful way, due to the implementation of Samsung's new anti-glare technology, then let me lay those concerns to rest right now. This TV looks phenomenal. There's been no sacrifice to brightness, no sacrifice to richness, no apparent loss of gloss, like wet stuff still looks wet, shiny stuff still looks shiny. It is absolutely incredible. Now first, let me reiterate what I said at CES, but perhaps with some more gusto. This new anti-glare technology Samsung has developed, it's where exterior light goes to die. When we filmed the 8K and 4K flagships here, we had to be pretty clever about where we placed our studio lights because the lights we brought in for this shoot are really powerful and bright. So bright that even when we aimed at the ceiling, we were still getting some light spillage on the panel. And those TVs have the anti-glare tech that have earned Samsung a reputation as being the most bright room friendly TVs you can buy. But this, this anti-glare tech is like black magic. It's like that Vanta black stuff, the carbon nanotube stuff. If you've ever seen that, then you know. It's like a black hole. Light goes in, but it does not come out. This studio light puts out 56,000 lux at one meter. It will temporarily blind you if you look right at it. But the S95D here seems to be completely unaware, not only of the brightness of this light, but possibly its very existence. I'm not joking. This is the most impressive anti-glare and anti-reflectant I've ever seen on a display. Samsung deserves some huge props for making this. Now, I know that at CES, in a side-by-side -side comparison, we saw what seemed like minimal loss of gloss or luster. But now that I've seen this TV alone, I know that it is not perceivable outside of a side-by-side -side comparison. We've talked about that before, where a side-by-side -side comparison skews your perception of your own power of perception. It can be really misleading. Look at this. That water on the actress's back looks wet. There's tons of luster and shine there. I'd even go so far as to say it seems like it's got more of a luster to it in the peak highlights. But maybe that's because this is the brightest OLED overall that I've tested to date. That's right, not only did the anti-glare implementation, which is notorious for sapping TVs of their potential brightness, by the way, not only has it not dimmed this TV, this TV is actually far brighter than I expected it to be. Honestly, I would have given this TV a huge thumbs up if we got the anti-reflectant and it was exactly as bright as the S95C last year. But we got better than that. This TV got the anti-glare and it is brighter than last year. As I tested this TV, I got up to 1,750 nits peak white brightness from a 10% window. I got about 900 nits in an 18% window and almost 300 nits full screen white. Now, LG's G3 and presumably the new G4 OLED can get brighter in the whites, I suppose. But the S95D's real ace in the hole is its color brightness, which can exceed WRGB OLED type panels while retaining color saturation. 
which has always been what made QD OLED TVs look extra special. But that effect has been ramped up quite a bit with this new model. I'll also mention that in filmmaker mode with the warm one color temperature selected, which by the way is not the default for filmmaker mode, it's actually uh, warm two. But in warm one, the white balance, gamma, EOTF tracking, and color accuracy measurements were stellar. I'm not sure why, but the warm two color temp setting did not yield nearly as accurate results, which is something I've mentioned to Samsung, and we'll see if anything changes by the time this TV hits the streets. But my understanding is this is a production model. So the guidance going forward may be pick filmmaker mode and then select the warm one color temperature for the most accurate picture possible. Speaking of, if you weren't already aware, Samsung is running a pre-order promotion as we record this video, where if you pre-order now, you get basically a free 65 inch TV. As I record this, the details around that aren't available. So check the description for a link to that deal so you can learn more. I can see maybe wanting to wait for the prices to come down in the coming months, but if you like the idea of getting a free 65 inch TV along with your purchase, maybe buying now is the way to go. That's gonna come down to what your needs and wants are, I suppose, but I do know this offer is gonna be very short term. I think it ends in April at some point. Now, to be clear, this TV still needs a full review, which I will be doing. I was able to measure this and three other TVs, but I was not able to do a super deep dive. I'm pretty happy with the lack of judder on 24 FPS content for movie watching. And what I'm seeing from Samsung's latest processors is better upscaling and cleaner presentation of low resolution, low bit rate, and low bit depth streaming content. Though it remains to be seen how close Samsung can get to Sony's processing chops in those regards. I'll also mention that while I tested the most accurate picture modes on this TV, Samsung does offer other picture modes where it intentionally over brightens the image. So if you like a brighter picture, this TV can certainly do that, no problem. But I think the real great news here is that even in its most accurate modes, this TV abates glare so well that you don't have to over brighten an image to get better perceived bright room performance. Normally, we wanna see a raised APL or average picture level, so the picture is bright enough to kinda clap back at the bright light in sun-soaked rooms. And this TV can do that better than most, if not all OLEDs that I've tested, but it doesn't have to. The anti-glare makes this TV more bright room friendly than most TVs on the market, I think. And that includes the brightest QLEDs out there. I mean, really, other than the price, folks are just about out of excuses for not buying an OLED now that this TV exists. Now, this is not a full review, right? Like I haven't tested the gaming mode on this TV, I haven't covered the changes to the Tizen Smart OS or talked about how they make the experience better or worse. There's a new Knox security chip in here we should talk about. Uh, we should talk about its merits as a smart home hub. And I didn't do a deep dive on its sound quality. It's pretty great. So for all those reasons, I can't wait to get this TV in for review and try to find its hidden weaknesses, if it even has any. Because from what I've seen so far, the S95D is a monumental achievement for Samsung. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about the S95D and my initial take on it? Are you a little bit surprised? Maybe a little incredulous? I don't blame you. Let me know all about it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.